This story is incredible. A physicist sticks his head into a particle accelerator and a high energy proton beam shoots through his brain. This really happened. And we take a look at the incredible original footage of the brain and find out what happened to the physicist and whether he survived. So be sure to stay tuned until the end and if you like it, I'll be galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment. Because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to shoot this video through the brains of even more people. Thanks guys and welcome. On a scale of 1 to 10, how clumsy are you? Feel free to let me know in the comments. Maybe there are some of you who are just like me. I'm pretty much the biggest klutz on the planet, ask my wife, and she'll tell you. But even I've never had the following happen to me, sticking my head in a particle accelerator and accidentally having a high energy beam shot through my brain. But that is exactly what happened to Anatoly Bugorsky, a Russian physicist who worked at the Institute of High Energy Physics in Protvino in Russia, then still part of the Soviet Union. The institute had set itself the goal of researching subatomic particles and the properties of nuclear physics, and Bugorsky was involved in special research that dealt with the construction of particle accelerators, a technology that we still use today, for example at CERN in Switzerland, to try to solve the greatest mysteries of the universe. So for example, are there other subatomic particles that are unknown to us? Why does quantum physics seem to be the smallest level of the universe? And why do people put pineapples on pizza? We will probably never be able to answer the latter question. Particle accelerators are devices that accelerate subatomic particles to high energies in order to study them as they collide with each other. And the results of these collisions can then optimally improve our understanding of the fundamental properties of the cosmos. Bogorsky worked in the late 1970s at the largest Soviet particle accelerator, the U-70 synchrotron, which could accelerate protons to energies of up to 76 giga electron volts. Definitely a very exciting job. But on July 13, 1978, Bogorsky would probably have liked a little less excitement. Hold on to your hats, because what happened that day will set your particles aflutter. Bogorsky wanted to investigate a problem with the beam line, the tube inside which the particles are accelerated. While he was sticking his head into the tube, the unthinkable happened. A proton beam raced through the tube and penetrated his skull. How could this happen? The answer, as so often, is human error. The accelerator was activated by a colleague who was also trying to solve the problem that had caused Bogorsky to stick his head into the tube. A tragic accident at work. And the moral of the story, always keep an eye on your colleagues at work, especially if you know they put pineapple on pizza. You can't trust people like that. What happened to Anatoly Bogorsky at that moment? Spoiler, he survived, and was therefore able to describe exactly how he perceived the penetration of his brain by a proton beam. According to his own statement, he saw a light brighter than a thousand suns but felt no pain. There were no external injuries either. The proton beam was so energetic that it penetrated Bogorsky's skull anyway. The beam moved through his skull at such high speed that the damage was concentrated on a very small area, leaving his outer skin largely undermegged. In Bogorsky's brain, however, the proton beam caused some damage to the tissue and cells. Damage to his nerve fibers, which control the facial muscle, led to partial facial paralysis. The proton beam also damaged the nerve cells in Bogorsky's ear, which in turn led to persistent tinnitus, a constant ringing in the ears. But that was it. Bogorsky pulled his head out of the steel tube, his brain pierced by a super energetic proton beam, and the only after effects were partial facial paralysis and tinnitus. Don't get me wrong, of course these are tragic after effects that changed Bukowski's life forever, but in view of what happened you really have to call it a blessing in disguise, don't you? The proton beam could have caused his death or serious injury. His luck was that the beam passed through his brain so quickly and so energetically that major damage was avoided. But I can already hear some of you asking, But what exactly happened in his head? I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know that you can help me a lot with a thumbs up for the video. Let's make a little challenge out of it. Let's see if we can get 500 likes. Let's go, people. Okay, so the beam passed through the back of Bogorsky's head, the so-called occipital and temporal lobes of his brain, the left middle ear, and exited through the left side of his nose. These parts of his head received a radiation dose of 200,000 to 300,000 Ronkens, just to give you an idea. With the natural radiation exposure that affects the average person, it would take a million years to get 300,000 Roentgens. 
The passage of the proton beam through Bogorsky's brain caused a cascade of events that led to inflammation of the affected brain tissue. And the energy of the proton beam was enough to ionize atomic molecules, which then set off a chain reaction. This begs the question, how on earth did Bogorsky survive this? And the answer is no one knows. Dr. David Brenner, head of the Department of Radiation Biology at Columbia University Medical Center says, the brain is a very delicate structure, and when it is exposed to high doses of radiation, it can be severely damaged. A radiation dose as high as the one Bogorsky received should normally have resulted in death. It must have been a chain of very fortunate circumstances that saved Bogorsky from death. As already mentioned, the speed of the beam, the precise angle of entry in the exact neuronal area that was penetrated, and the good regenerative capacity of his brain. It is probably not presumptuous to say that if only a small variable such as the angle of inclination of his head had been minimally different. Anatoly Bogorsky would be dead today. That's right, he's still alive and is now 81 years old. His life expectancy was apparently not affected by the event. That reminds me, didn't the Hulk also get his superpowers through contact with radioactive radiation? Not least because of this accident, safety precautions at particle accelerators are much higher nowadays. In facilities such as CERN in Switzerland, the beam tubes are much better shielded and the safety protocols are much, much stricter. For example, thick concrete walls are now used to surround the beam lines. These walls are able to stop most of the high energy particle beams and prevent people from sticking their heads in and the particles escaping from the beam pipe. There are also so-called beam dumps in which the energy of the protons is safely converted into thermal energy of up to 800 degrees in an emergency situation. As tragic as the story of Anatoly Bogorsky is, it has taught us a lot about the effect of high energy beams on the human brain and has significantly improved safety precautions in particle accelerators. Quick note that every click on the subscribe button helps. If you watch this video and haven't subscribed, yet or know any space enthusiast friends and family, I would be galactically happy if you help me make this channel even bigger so I never have to eat Hawaiian pizza again. Thanks guys. Let's stay on the subject of gigantic amounts of energy. The most violent explosion mankind has ever witnessed live, releasing the energy of 50 million nuclear bombs happened on Jupiter. And there is incredible original footage of this event in the video shown. Be sure to check it out and if you want to support my work, check out the space store for the shirts from the videos, real meteorites, plush black holes and much more. Every purchase helps me to continue running the channel. Otherwise, I would say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.